Hello folks. On the bench today, I've got two welders that are dramatically different in cost. And despite the massive price difference, I'm going to directly compare them. On paper, the specified performance of the two machines doesn't appear nearly as different as the price would suggest. They're both dual voltage TIG welders in the neighborhood of 200 amps rated output. They both have high frequency start and they're both capable of stick welding. And I think we'll see that in terms of ultimate capability, they really aren't all that different. The welders I have here are on the left, a Miller Maxstar 210. And on the right, I have an Amico Power TIG 185HF. I fully understand that anyone in the market for something like the Amico isn't likely to be talked into getting a Miller or vice versa. And that isn't the purpose of this video. Welders like the Amico are attractive because they're one of the cheapest options out there. And on the flip side, the Miller is among the most expensive DC only TIG and stick welders. And I think seeing the performance difference between these two extremes could be worthwhile. And keep in mind, there are plenty of options in between. I'll soon be reviewing an Everlast TIG welder that is only $100 more expensive than the Amico. And that Everlast would make a much more logical competitive option to the Amico, and if it performs well, it would be a wholehearted recommendation over the Amico. We certainly aren't hurting for options these days, and these two welders aren't really normal, reasonable competitors, but comparing them could still be interesting. I'll talk about performance shortly, but first, let's talk about pretty much everything else. Don't take any of this the wrong way and think that I'm trying to unfairly knock the Amico or praise the Miller. These are just my observations about each welder and they may help you to understand what it is you're giving up or getting for the cost of each of these welders. The Amico is similar to many other Chinese welders in that it seems that a company took a basic inverter power source design and then assembled it into a case with cobbled together parts without any real added engineering or even testing and quality control to ensure that the design worked. This may seem overly harsh, but this is actually the third Amico welder that I've purchased and tested out, and all three have had quality control and design issues. The first TIG welder had a gas fitting on the back of the welder that simply wasn't correct. It had finicky high frequency start and a non-adjustable post flow that was way too short. The ARC 140 stick welder arrived with the fan not connected and the output polarity backwards. And if I remember correctly, uh, the main power cord strain relief was super loose on one or maybe even both of those welders. This new Amico welder is improved over the one I reviewed previously, but it still has issues and quirks. Out of the box, the welder had a severe gas leak. I took the welder apart and found that the gas fitting on the gas solenoid was bottomed out against the nut that holds the gas solenoid in place. This prevented the fitting from sealing. Uh, luckily, I was able to remove and grind down the fitting so that it did seal when I reinstalled it. And while working on that little issue, I found another thing. Uh, the rear plastic cover has a hex shape molded in where the gas fitting sticks through, but the gas fitting itself is just round. This means that the gas fitting is not held from turning as it is in some other welders. Also, the gas solenoid itself is only held from turning by a small jam nut, so you really should hold that fitting on the welder from turning when you tighten or loosen a hose. If you don't hold the fitting, you could end up loosening the fitting on the solenoid or even turning the whole solenoid in the welder, which could cause problems with the wiring or the internal hose or whatever, so um, you definitely want to hold that fitting. Next, I assume that the post down knob on the welder adjusted the gas post flow but there's nothing in the manual or on Amico's website that actually says anything about that knob or what it does. The manual has a diagram of the front of the welder and it does show the knob, but it points out what everything is except that knob. Now I have tested and confirmed that it is adjustable post flow, but the functionality is either poorly designed and implemented or simply defective on my welder. The knob has a scale of one to 10, but I found that everywhere between one to nine gives a post flow of slightly under one second, which is virtually useless. Between nine and 10 on the scale, the post flow adjusts up to a max of about six seconds. That's definitely better than the three and a half seconds that the previous Amico welder had, but it's still short for higher amperages. And even within that tiny range of nine to 10, the adjustment is inconsistent. 
Combine that with the fact that six seconds still isn't all that much, and I'd probably just leave it maxed out rather than ever bothering to mess with it. Considering the price, these may seem like minor issues, but it does show that you aren't paying for design, testing, and quality control on these welders. You're paying for a company to take a cookie cutter inverter design and stick it in the case with cheap, off-the-shelf odds and ends to complete the setup. I'm not trying to be harsh, but you're clearly not paying for careful attention to detail on the design and build quality of these welders. Remember, this isn't a one-off. All three of the Amoco welders I've tried had issues out of the box. There are other little things that aren't a big deal at all, but they do support this feeling. The Amoco comes with a tungsten for the torch, but it's a non-standard size and doesn't match the included parts. Some of the specs on the website don't match the specs in the manual that comes with the welder or the numbers on the data tag on the welder. And the description of some of the accessories was incorrect as well. I'm not trying to pick on Amico. Um, I purchased an Autool stick welder to test out and it had multiple serious issues right out of the box, worse than any of the Amico welders I've tested. I I'm just trying to explain what I mean when I say that it feels a bit cobbled together without any real attention to detail. You may think I'm simply being picky because I'm comparing it to a Miller and I'm holding it to that standard. And that's not it at all. Having a design that ensures that all the features and components make sense and work as they should isn't exclusive to Miller. Once you move up from the very cheapest generic Chinese brands, you mostly get away from that cobbled together, may or may not function like you expect it type of feel. Just off the top of my head, brands like Miller, Lincoln, and Aesop, uh, Clutch, Vulcan, Titanium, Chicago Electric, uh, AHP, Everlast, HTP, Razor Weld, uh, and probably others I'm not thinking of, all seem to be above this slap together feel of the Amico and brands like it. They obviously vary quite a bit in features, quality, reliability, and price, and I'm not saying that everything ever made by any of those brands, including Miller, uh, is a good value or even especially good in general. Any brand can make a stinker of a product now and again, but they do at least seem to have enough engineering, testing, and quality control to ensure that the design is at least properly functional. As I said before, this Amico is an improvement over the last one, and maybe they'll continue to improve, but as it is now, it still feels like a bit of a kludge. On the Miller, as you would hope for the price, the design, build quality, component quality, and the fit and finish is just totally on a different level than the Amico. Nothing about it feels like a compromise, or like you'd have to work around little oversights in the design. Everything makes sense, behaves as expected, and works. It also has uh, quite a few more features. Earlier, I said that both of these machines are dual voltage, but the Miller can technically run on everything from 120 volt single phase up to 480 volt three phase power. The MacStar 210 has a built in voltmeter and ammeter so that while welding, the display shows the actual real time welding voltage and current. This is the standard version of the MacStar 210, not the deluxe model, so it only has the base features. These features include a fan that only runs when needed and even ramps up and down in speed as needed. It has lift start TIG in addition to high frequency start and it can do pulse TIG up to 250 pulses per second. It has an auto post flow mode that adjusts automatically according to the amperage used as well as a manual mode that is adjustable from 0 to 50 seconds. It has an adjustable tungsten size setting in the menu uh, and this supposedly lets you fine tune the high frequency arc starts if you need to or if you just want to change the, the feel of those a bit. It has an adjustable auto power off timer. It has an hour meter, an adjustable dig setting for stick welding, an anti-stick feature for stick welding, and a hot start feature that you can turn on or off. The MacStar also allows the use of a foot pedal or other amperage control while stick welding. So um, even just a foot switch or a switch on the electrode holder could be used to turn the welding power on and off so that the electrode isn't live all the time. There's also 2T and 4T and a constant on setting for both high frequency and lift TIG. In terms of warranty, the Amico claims a one year warranty. According to the wording of the warranty, any and all shipping has to be prepaid by the customer, uh, including to the factory in China if necessary. 
and they will only repair or replace items that they have inspected themselves and determined to be defective under normal use. They list a long line of exceptions uh, to the warranty and it states that any decision they make is final. Now, that's just how it's worded. Um, I, you know, I don't know exactly how they would be to deal with if someone actually had a welder fail, but just be aware that if nothing else, you might end up having to pay round trip shipping, possibly to China, to find out whether or not they'll cover a failure. I don't know if Amazon or eBay protections would help with possible defective returns, uh, but if you do decide to purchase directly from Amico's website, read their return policy carefully because uh, they don't actually seem to accept returns for defects. So even a dead welder out of the box might require a warranty claim versus simply being returned for a refund. The Miller has a full three-year warranty as well as a five-year warranty on the actual IGBT modules. Warranty service for the Miller is available locally uh, without the need to ship it across the country or you know, even to another country for warranty repairs. And in my experience, during the warranty period, Miller is very good about repair or replacement without any cost. Millers are also uh, generally able to be supported and repaired after the warranty is up. Although, keep in mind, I have heard that some of the repairs can be prohibitively expensive, uh, you know, so that can be an issue. But Miller does at least, you know, offer the ability to have them repaired later. Now, some would understandably argue that you could buy eight or more of this particular Amico welder for the price of the Maxstar 210. So, you know, the warranty may not be as important on the Amico. And, you know, that's a totally fair point. But the warranty is still a difference between the two, and the price of the Amico is still a decent chunk of money to be out, um, you know, if it happens to die in a month and the cost to ship it for warranty repair, you know, ends up more than the welder's worth. So clearly there are differences between these two welders that go along with the price. But what about their capability once you actually start welding? I won't talk too much about the TIG torch and other included accessories with the Amico uh, because they could be changed out, but I did use the included stuff with the Amico because I wanted to show that even though I really don't love the torch that the Amico comes with or where the button on it is positioned, it does work and someone who practices with it could get used to it and do fine with it. In terms of how each performs, the Miller has a smoother arc. Um, it feels and even sounds a bit smoother. There's a high frequency tone underlying the arc on the Amico. But the difference is minor and it didn't seem to have an effect on the weld in any meaningful way for me. Um, you know, maybe a, a TIG master would feel held back by the arc of the Amico, but probably not and I sure didn't. Keep in mind, it's been a while since I've done very much TIG welding, so I'm rusty and could stand some practice. I also don't have the steadiest hands in general. Basically, an expert TIG welder might find something to complain about with the arc on the Amico, but I'm sure they could also get far better results than I did out of either machine. And if they looked at my welds done with the Amico welder, they wouldn't tell me it was the welder's fault. <laughs> they would tell me to get good. The Miller does have the obvious advantage of amperage control with a foot pedal, which is really nice in a lot of situations. But it's clearly not an absolute requirement even when welding razor blades. In fact, I've welded razor blades with a scratch start setup cheaper than this Amico. So it's not like you can't get, you know, even precise work done without a foot pedal. The high frequency starts on this newer Amico are much better than the old one. Starts are crisp and reliable. The only area where it struggled a bit was at really low amperage. That's not surprising, and overall the arc starts are very good. But uh, it is still one area where the Miller is better. The high frequency starts on the Miller are smoother and gentler, and while still being crisp and totally reliable. Even down to 7 amps, the arc would start right up and never felt harsh or momentarily overpowering. The Miller also runs a bit lower amperage in general, and the foot pedal allows really precise control at those low amperages. The Miller made it almost effortless to get uh, these results on razor blades first try. At higher amperages, there's less that stands out between the two. I do appreciate the ability of the Miller to run more than six seconds of post flow. Uh, the post flow limitation on the Amico feels especially disappointing because of the wasted potential of it having an adjustment, but just having it so poorly done. When stick welding, uh, the Miller struck an arc more easily without sticking, and it was less picky about the exact amperage setting that it would run well, and it was simply smoother and easier experience overall. 
The Amico does fine, but the Miller is kind of like easy mode by comparison. Also, I did test out 6010 rods with both machines. The TIG 185 will not run 6010. That wasn't surprising because that limitation is not unique to the Amico. Uh, plenty of inverter stick welders fail to run 6010 properly. I know some people were curious about it, so I gave it a shot. So you know, the Maxstar 210 does actually run 6010 rods perfectly well. Overall, I'm rusty and need lots of practice, but in more talented hands, either of these welders could make excellent welds. And that's where we ultimately end up with this comparison. With practice, either of these machines can give acceptable results and make good looking welds. The fact is, the basic function of creating a DC arc isn't that complicated, particularly now that it's being done with modern electronics through these inverters. So in terms of the basic function of a DC TIG welder, there isn't going to be a huge difference in the final results that you can achieve in most situations. The extra features of the Miller will make some things easier and might even allow you to achieve certain things that you would struggle to accomplish with the Amico, but the ultimate capabilities aren't nearly as far apart as the cost would suggest. It's just all the other stuff where the Amico falls behind. But if you know about the issues and are willing to accept them, fix them, or work around them, and you're willing to put up with the quirks and risks that you know might come along with the ride with these types of welders, you can be pretty confident that you can at least achieve good final results with it. So that's my thoughts on these two welders. Um, you know, hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions or if there's anything specific you'd like me to test with either of these welders, let me know. As always, thanks for watching. Take care.